our lesson today is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 6. Solomon's Proverb, chapter 6, verse 6. Let's go together. Go to the ant, O sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber, and want like an armed man. What you have heard the word of God. Stand up for the gospel, please. The gospel is according to St. Mark, chapter 4, starting from verse 35. Mark 4, verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall called up, came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was near, nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked, and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The gospel reading.
I am struggling to catch my breath. I forgot that I was the one coming next. <laughs> yes. So for our brothers and sisters that don't speak the language, this song is talking about the eternal peace of God. That God gives free of charge. And it invites you to observe and partake of that eternal peace and joy. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. take us through a lesson, so I am not going to preach. I am going to go through a lesson. And as a teacher, I like it whenever I get an opportunity to teach. So I want to appreciate the management of the church, the clergy, for giving me an audience. After all, who am I? I can stand before a multitude of people speak to him. So let's sum ourselves and pray. Dear Lord Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity of service. We thank you for the day you've made. Now, Lord, that we are going to listen to your word. I pray that you come in me, increase my knowledge, understanding, decrease myself and increase yourself in me, that whatever I can say here, is from you and can benefit you people in Jesus name and pray Amen. so thank you very much uh, my name is Edton Babu majority of you know me I've been in this church since 2007 uh, I am married to a very beautiful woman Masi Babu with whom we have four lovely children my first daughter is in the Wanyastara service. I think she has gone to get something to eat. I'm trying to throw her the way of service. I want to welcome all of you, especially Wanyastara. Oh, my daughter is here. Please. Yeah, for recognition. That one is now in intubation to Makere University Business School. So, uh, this morning, I want to say we are happy for all of you. You are all welcome. You look good. Thank you for leading us. I want to recognize my brother, Major Malinga. If you can stand up for recognition. Yeah. Major Malinga is a, a very big person. He's the chairperson of the National School Proprietors Cooperative Union. And when you talk about cooperative, you're talking about money. So the subject is very relevant, and that's why I took special recognition of him. So tell your neighbor, today we are going to talk about money matters. And I know there are people, there are Christians who think that talking about money is actually sinful. In fact, I told the earlier service that for some of our brothers and sisters, there is where you take a vow of poverty. Like you vote that for me, I will die poor. But that's not what God desires us to do. God desires us to be wealthy, to have money. Actually, you serve God better when you have money, right? Yes, because every time they put a basket, you will not complain. Now, who you see? <laughs> what? Because God has given you money. And after all, God says, silver and gold are whose? They are whose? They are for God. Silver and gold are mine. So, the subject of our discussion this morning is silver and gold. And our topic is building, building a nest of gold for the golden age. Can you repeat after me? Building a nest of gold. Yes. As a good teacher, I want to explain a few words in my theme. Gold. Why gold? Gold is one of the most ancient outstanding in the national currency. But gold is also biblical. It does not only talk about money and material. It also talks about spiritual. <coughs> Knowledge, wisdom, understanding is actually gold. 
if you increase in your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, then you have God. But also, as you know, there is what they call the golden age. The golden age is for our respectable elders that are towards or have broke their retirement age. So our topic this morning is how do you build a nest of gold for your golden age? So when we talk about this topic, some young people may begin thinking, does this concern me? Does many things concern me? I get school fees, I go and that's it. Yes, this topic concerns you because we are talking about building. If you have observed, for those who grew up in the village, when a bird is building a nest, it brings one piece, one at a time. And before you know it, it has a full nest. How I wish all of us would work hard to have that uh, nest of gold so that when we grow old, we don't become a burden. We don't become a, 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 an inconvenience. When you call your daughters and sons, they say, ah, now daddy, what is he asking for this time around? So, this topic is so important that we talk about it in church. Because a study that was done last year in 2023 and launched 2024, for those who like reading, it is called Finscope Study 2023. This is what it observed. They interviewed majority of Ugandans. Then they concluded that one, seven out of ten Ugandans are financially insecure. Seven out of ten are broke, to use the right word. Isn't that a catastrophe? That seven, if, if we count that random in this room, <laughs> and out of ten, seven of us are broke, or well, maybe this is not the right sample because you are the cream, the cream of this nation. Now, the same study indicated that nine out of 10 Ugandans do not have a long-term plan, financial plan. They live for a day. What you get today, tomorrow, mm -hmm, that is very dangerous. That you are living on one day. You do not have a plan for three, five, ten years. But we also know that our life expectancy has increased. That most of us are going to live beyond 80. And by the grace of God, even clock 100. So for you not to have a long-term financial plan, what will happen to your golden age becomes a very critical issue. The same report goes ahead to say majority of Ugandans are surviving by borrowing from relatives, brothers, and friends for survival. Borrowing. <laughs> you are borrowing to survive. And then, the last one says, majority of you got, not majority actually, let me, let me be scientific. Almost 40% of Ugandans are still keeping money under their beds. They do not have a bank account. They do not keep money in the bank for whatever reasons. What is God's will about our finances? One, God's will about our finances as put in Deuteronomy 8, 18 is and it says but you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth giving you power to make what? Yeah. so it means wealth is biblical it is not sinful but then God is saying when you have made the wealth you will remember him right now there are people who cannot go to church because wealth has increased Sunday is the day when they go to take care of their flock, to wash whatever, take them to the deep, to take account of their stock. They use Sunday. But the Bible is saying, you shall remember. Because it's the one who gives, gives you the what? The power. The same Bible gives us assurance. And it says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. Amen? Amen? You can never beg for bread if you're a Christian. You should never beg for bread. That's the Bible. So God has given us the, the knowledge, the power, and the wisdom. And then the same Bible tells us that if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith 
and is worse than an unbeliever. Did you get that? If you are a dad, a tata, and you cannot provide for your family, hey, the Bible says you are worse than an unbeliever. You hear me? That is it. So, provision is very important. I had someone on social media one time uh, saying, Tata, a tata, tawa tata. Hey, the father who does not release <laughs> things is not. So, this subject is very pertinent that we should even take it to our schools. Unfortunately, our schools do not teach financial literacy. So you can grow up, go through school, become a professor of economics when you are financially illiterate. You can actually work for Ministry of Finance when you are actually financially illiterate. But we need to teach our children. This subject, when you talk about it, below 25 years of age, the young people will tell you, ah, I shall save when I'm old. It's like a far-fetched dream. And I remember when I was young, I was lucky I started working while I was at university. I was only thinking about spending. I bought a white chikumi, uh, very white in nature. It was for party only. I only wake up when, woke up when God made me have an accident. Then I realized, hey, Kumba, I don't own anything other than this small thing. Young people must begin thinking about retirement, old age, when they are young. The subject of money must be introduced to your children as soon as they can speak and as soon as they can understand. Some of you talking about money is a taboo. Somebody was telling me recently, uh, a, a child going to S1 could not differentiate between a 50,000 note and 20,000. Like, like, had no idea because talking about money in their home was a taboo. So when they bought, bought the delivered groceries, the mother was uh, saying, go and pick money, and then uh, he, he meant uh, 1,000. And he said, pick a brown, uh, a brown note. Uh, the child went and picked a 50K. I believe I did. When you talk about financial management at 35, uh, some people begin saying, you know, I, I, I will save when I'm about 40, maybe. I will cross the bridge when I reach there. At 55, you begin realizing that you should have saved when you are 23 or 20 or below. Because bills have started setting in, life has become expensive, children are in school, but then at retirement, you are like, I am in God's hands. <laughs> you become an emergency to handle. You become an emergency as an adult. Because you did not take care of your young age, you are now a what? You say, ah, after all, my children and grandchildren will look after me. <laughs> now, if you are here, and the reason you best feel for your children is so that they will look after you, I am sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> because studies are even showing that for this generation, I think it is now Z, I don't know where they have reached. <laughs> we are like here as parents to look after them and their spouses and their children. <laughs> so, if, if you are here and... <laughs> the Z generation, Z, this is where we are. <laughs> Studies are showing that you have to work hard because even when they are educated, even when they get jobs, you are likely going to take care of not only them, <laughs> okay, so because of that, it's very important that you actually plan and plan well. So ladies and gentlemen, I have a reflection here. When I talk about this subject, people may begin thinking, ah, I'm talking about people that are not here. So we have what we call the old poor and the new poor. So the old poor, we know them. They stay in the village, dilapidated houses, they... They, they, they live on begging, essentials, and other things. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenge we have is the new poor. They disguise, you can never know them. They try to dress a little bit well. They have lived a life of plenty. Before, in history, 
So they can tell you when I was a, 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 a commissioner. They can tell you, you see, when I was a director of UEB or the fact the uh, commercial bank. So those ones are very, very difficult people because they have had a relationship with money. When I started the working, I was renting in a, a, some place called Kamuli in Chireka. My immediate neighbor was a, a retired gentleman from uh, State House. Oh, wow, you used to tell me stories. When I was in Burma, when I was where you are. But in the meantime, you could not afford a newspaper. So you would ask me, when I go, I bring him. So you would read newspapers of today, tomorrow. Because I would bring, <laughs> I would bring him newspapers. The only thing he could show in life was uh, an old Samyong that he had confiscated, he had refused to hand over. When he retired, they came to take the thing, he said to hell, I cannot. Hey, what will I remember government for? He confiscated the Samyong. And then he could not fuel it. So it was bad. <laughs> to cut the wrong story short, he was saved by one of the relatives who built him a simple village in the a simple house in the village. And two years after he passed on. But he was still young, he was not even 70. Those are the new poor. They live in an atmosphere of steady decay and capitulation into irrelevance. Development partners cannot readily trace them for support. And they are bitter with everyone. Bitter! <laughs> when you pass around, they say, ah, those are thieves. You drive in your car. These, these are stealing government money. Uh, in the village, when you build a good house, they say, that one has gone underwater. <laughs> I don't know the way to work about it. it is, they, are, they are bitter. You pass by the trending service, you see, he cannot even greet us. <laughs> so they are bitter. That's my OB. But he was even, I used to beat him in class. So what? In fact, there is a book I want you to look for. Uh, it's a very fascinating book. I, I captured one time I was, uh, I, was, I was coming from the US at Amsterdam Air, Airport. And, the, the, the book is a, the, 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 the headline was screaming. It says, how come that idiot is rich and I am not? <laughs> how come the idiot, the one you beat in class, the one who was very, uh, is now rich and you are struggling? Could there be some sins you are committing? Because they are what you call financial sins that we commit. And unless you save yourself from that, Attaining financial freedom will only remain a dream and a subject. The first one, overconfidence. I am right. I beat everyone. I can get a job. What are you talking about? I can resign. Overconfidence about money is a big financial sin. The second one, the what we call acrophobia. <laughs> Peer pressure. Peer pressure. You work according to what you are, your, 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 your your OBs and OGs are about. If they are driving a certain vehicle, you want to drive that one. If they have all built in Namugongo, you also want to go to Namugongo. If they have taken their children to international school, you also want to do that. You don't know how they earn. You don't know what they do when you go to sleep. Do you know? <laughs> For you, you know their paycheck, that it is lower than yours. But do you know what they do after that? So that acrophobia is very dangerous. The other scene is what you call cultural blackmail. Cultural blackmail is where you are there and in your head you're like, okay, in our culture, nah, this can never be done. I mean, yeah, we cannot. For us, in our culture. Then the other one is high dependence ratio. Dependence. And Africans, we are very good people. We have high level of dependence. But I want to tell you, I also have people I, 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 that depend on me. But do not make those a primary. Your primary responsibility is your family, your children, by which The other ones are also very important. Hey, what we discovered and uh, learned to do uh, 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 with my wife very soon, because when we started earlier, I am the eldest in the family, my, my parents had passed on. That means that I had so many. And our family was like a market all the time. The sitting room, the dining, the heart, people sleeping. And it was so bad. I would go to work, come find my wife who uh, almost cried. He said, this one has uh, failed to, 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 to clean. This one has put our brothers in wherever. This one has uh, done something. We said, you know what? 
Let everybody find their place. We will support them there. I don't mind. Yes, I will support you from there. Because, you know, we had a member of parliament. I read a lot of things from Kamui. He could never buy a chicken for his household because there were too many people in the hall. So he would sneak out his children to buy and eat chicken. And then, <laughs> so why don't you help people from where they are? They have where. For sure they can find a place. If you are at university, go to the hostel. If you have finished university, I can give you six months rent. And that's it. But somewhere. But this person finished three years ago. What are they doing in your house? I, I am sorry if I'm talking about anybody. But what are you still doing in, in the boys' quarter three years after? Eh? That's a financial thing we are committing. At 18, children of the, uh, in the both countries, they, left, they leave their home forever. They only come to visit. At 25 and 30, hours are busy on WhatsApp in our boys' quarters. <laughs> The other living uh, 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 financial scene is uh, to do with financial literacy. How much do you know about money? Whom do you seek advice from? Again, one of the books, I, I will keep mentioning these books, I am happy to write them down. Because whatever I am saying is there. One of the books that has shaped my financial literacy journey is one of the most oldest book. It is called The Richest Man in Babylon. Go look for the book. The richest man in Babylon. The richest man in Babylon is saying, you cannot go to look for advice from somebody who has failed to advise you because they are older than you. <laughs> you cannot go to invest in schools and you're asking a tomato seller how you should do it. Seek for advice from people that are experienced. And then the other one, uh, financial scene, is the past demons. <laughs> past demons. Past demons. I did business and it failed. I cannot never, I can never go back to farming. Do you know what happened? Drought came and finished everything. Eh? Mobile money. The thieves will come and take. Past demons. But actually in financial literacy we say, if you fail a business and don't start again, it's like paying fees without sitting exams. Because actually you are learning. To avoid the same what? The same mistake. Past demons. And then the other one is being too close. Being too close. Ah, ah, for us, we are rich. My dad is rich. Children, you think that what I own is yours? Zero. What I own is for me and my wife. Eh? What you own is the education I am giving you. I cannot. Some of us have even gone ahead. Uh, every child has a protein camp. For what? You are making the children lazy. You have told them they are the ones who own these things. Zero. They don't own them. These are your things and you and your wife. Whatever remains is the balance they can take. But I want to tell you, instead of preparing for children, you better pre pre prepare the children. Prepare the who? The children. You are committing a financial sin. They are being too close. They think what you own, they own. Uh -huh. That must stop. So, when we talk about financial freedom, what are we talking about? We are talking about you having the capacity to live without active employment. Be having enough resources for you to live on and also be able to give to charity. That's financial freedom. Okay? And how do you prepare for that? One, you must know where you stand today. Where do you stand? Are you prospering? Are you declining? Or are you in disarray? with regard to your finances. Where do you stand? Two, set your long-term financial goals. I don't know by show of hands how many of you have a long-term written vision for your life, blueprint. Exactly, clap, clap, clap for these people. I do have one. If you ask me 10 years from now, I will show you exactly what I want, where I want to be, and how I will reach there. It's a blueprint, and actually, uh, uh, psychologists and philosophers tell you 10 years is actually a cycle. So I want to encourage you to begin thinking. And when you think, write down. And when you write down, share with your spouse. Share with your children. So that they can partake of your long-term what? Vision. Part three, track where your money goes. 
track where your money goes. Where does my money go? Especially those of you who earn money salary like me. You earn money, money is put on your account. After the first week, you're already broke. In fact, it is known. If you want to observe in Kampala here, the worst jam happens during the pay month, the pay, the pay week. <laughs> By middle of the month, you can drive very smoothly. <laughs> People have packed the things. I am telling you. So, <laughs> that is poor planning. That you can only drive your car the first week when you have a salary. That means you don't even deserve to be driving. The next one, spend less on useless junk. Useless junk. There are so many things. How many times do you eat out? And if you must eat out anyway. How many useless phones, gadgets that we have? We are surrounded by gadgets and things that we don't need to use. Some people buy, uh, um, when I was in the US, I would be surprised when they release like, a, new, a new version of iPhone. People even sleep at the factory to be the first ones to get it. I am here with Chinese techno, it is working as well. So, anyway, I am not saying you cannot partake of that one, but at what expense? The fifth one, pay off your debts. A gentleman, a gentlewoman pays off their what? Some of you are so indebted that you hide from everybody, even your own shadow. <laughs> By the time you say a phone call, you say, ha, <laughs> this one is demanding money. I am told our honorable members, I don't know if they deserve the title, some of them cannot leave parliament during the day. Because people are waiting outside to demand for the money. They are about to sleep in the house. No wonder you see what is happening there. Number, number six, develop a saving habit. I will talk about that later. Number seven, create more sources of income. Create more sources of what? I don't care whether you are working a full-time job. Actually, one of the biggest writers also write this book. It's called Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki wrote a book, say, retire young, retire rich. And he says, work very diligently and hard for your employer. Do not deny him of his money and his time. But at the same time, learn to mind your own business. Have you heard that? Without cheating your employer of time and money, you must learn to do what? One morning, you will not be in that office. But also just consider that there were other people in that office before you, okay? Now, what is the issue about finances? You must determine what you need and what you can do without. Discuss family finances and set family financial goals. Discuss with the family. Some of you sharing money at home is a taboo. Even your salary. How? Oh, your spouse getting to know how much you are. That is very dangerous. You must share family resources and money. Why I don't deny that the money is the head of the family? By the Bible. And why I don't demand, de deny that the man is a, a main provider of the family? But if you are my spouse and working, can you contribute some bills? Please, contribute some bills. Let's share. Actually, men don't even be greedy. I know some men who have grabbed air, 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 uh, uh, ATM cards of their spouses. <laughs> yes, I did a study, and they are saying the woman works, the man has the ATM card. Can you imagine? And then when the money comes, the man puts the ATM, removes the money, and then appropriates it. That's not right. A woman is entitled to her money. And even me, I'm entitled to my money. Right? <laughs> but we must find the family. We must find the middle ground, OK? Hey, so let the woman have her money. Let me have my money. But let's talk about what? Family what? Family money. One of my friends, when I was going to wait, he took me aside. <laughs> And he said, now as a man, you have grown up, you need to save money. I said, yes. Then he said, now, you are going to have three accounts. I said, yes. The first account is going to be the one where you're saving your money, your salary. I said, yes. Very good. The second account is going to be money where you put together with your wife. I said, ah, oh, that's very good. Then he said, but as a man, you need the third account. <laughs> I said, oh, third account, the other one. I said, mm -hmm. for what? He said, you see that we pay a rainy day when your spouse doesn't want to know that you don't have money. 
So you must have the other account. You say, Woman, I say, that's dangerous. And indeed, I know I have heard from Bank of Uganda that their money is undeclared. That stay there when spouse is personal. Yes. Because you have the other account. <laughs> Your spouse doesn't know. You are cross. It's a lot of money. So in billions. Ah, she's confirming from Bank of Uganda. So who wants to work? And then your money will go to people you did not intend. Is there anyone of us? So why don't you declare this money? So that it can be used uh, appropriately. Now, allow me to talk about uh, gambling. Avoid gambling. If you want money cheaply, you are going to lose. I know most of us want quick money. Because these days, we are talking about instant everything. Instant coffee, instant food, instant. So you want instant money. That's not what happens. The formula of money is that you work, it accumulates over time, it compounds, it grows, and you become rich. But you can't finish school yesterday, and you want to drive the same car for me who has been working for 20 years. How? Then you begin stealing money, and they arrest you, and you become a, 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 a history. So, it's very, very important to differentiate between your needs and wants, assets and liabilities. Are you accumulating assets or are you accumulating liabilities? The definition, simple layman definition of assets, is anything that puts money in your pocket. Anything that puts money in your pocket is a what? An asset. Anything that pulls money out of your pocket is a what? Are you accumulating assets or liabilities? There are people whose compounds you go to, they have abandoned cars. They have a car for dropping children. They have a car for shamba boy. They have a car. They are all accumulating. They are accumulating. The, the one for Sunday. And then the one for, I don't know. Meanwhile, their businesses are accumulating debts. Yes? So, are you accumulating assets or liabilities? Go back and check. Now, it is very important that your financial needs are categorized in three. The first category is everyday expenses. You must spend on food, you must spend on everything, you must come to church. Don't come empty-handed. The Bible has said so. So that money must be there. But the second category is expected future expenses. You must put money aside for future. Yes. You know you are going to marry. Isn't it? So why do you burden people attend wedding meetings? I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I attend very few. If you're in this church and you want to invite me for a wedding meeting, I attend very few. I can tell you. I don't see the use. I can contribute. But uh, to go and carry things on my head, fundraising for your wedding? Uh -huh. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> giving birth. Giving birth is nine months after the act. <laughs> after the action yes. is nine months. And then now the day when the wife, the wife is going to produce, you are running around like headless chicken. <laughs> and my wife is going to produce it. Now I need to buy this. Nine months? Ah, no. Unless there was an emergency or a catastrophe. That money you should have put aside. Isn't it? Yeah. No, let's be same Christians. So that we don't burden people. Every time they see you, say, ah, now what is he going to ask me about? And then, most importantly, most importantly, you must save for unexpected future expenses. Unexpected. All of us were here during COVID. And we saw what happened. If you did not have any saving, my friend, you don't know how many inboxes I would be getting. My food is running out. I am, my food is finished. Contributing food to people who are working. I wouldn't mind if they were students, they were not working. But people who were working, full-time jobs, three weeks of COVID, they were already on their knees, shifting their families back to the village, sneaking them because you couldn't even move. So must save money. Disability, death, funeral, major illness, unemployment, business failure, natural disasters, accidents. All those things you must save money for. Because you don't know what will happen to them. And for you to save that money, it means your income must be more than your expense. If you put it on a weighing scale. But if 7 out of 10 Ugandans are broke and living on expenses, it means that we are spending more than we have. 
sometimes to impress people who don't even matter. Yes, you think when you go to church with that hair of uh, 500,000, people will know. They don't even notice, I can tell you. <laughs> That's true. If your purpose of buying it was for people to see, you will be disappointed. Nobody will see that shoe. Mm -hmm. So stop living a life of pretense. If you want to take your child to international school, it's because you have couch cultivated, you have the resources. Not because your neighbor has done the same. Not. Everybody will study. International, uh, UP. Uh. Eventually, life will settle us somewhere. Live within your means. That's very important. And for you to live within your means, it means that you must have a budget. And a budget is not a list of things you want to spend on. When I talk about budget, people think it is a list of things you want to do what? No. A budget must go with income. List down all the things you spend on. List down all your sources of money. And tell me if you are not a thief. Because as long as your expenses, every month are more than your income, then there must be a problem. Either you are over-indebted or you are a thief. Always have a budget. At least, even for church, have an annual budget. Don't give by impulse. This I learned very early when I was at campus. I used to chair a few of those uh, university students association party. One prominent lawyer from our place promised us money. We went to pick it. And then he picked it out. When he was going to give it to us, he checked in his diary, he put it back, and he said, I am sorry, young man, my philanthropic quota is finished. <laughs> in other words, the money he was going to give us, even in cash, was not in the book. Because he had already overspent on that item. If you overspend on one item, you must reduce on what? On the other. Very important. So, how do you stay within your budget? One, make sure you do not spend more than is budgeted. If you spend more for one item, spend less on the other. Make a list of ways to cut plan the expenses. Get the family to participate in developing and sticking with the budget. Very important. Let family participate. They see you in ties and driving Porsche. They don't know you are actually going through financial problems. Tell them this month, ah, all my money is servicing the Lord. So let's cut down on expenses. So they are right to demand for vacation. They don't know what is in your past. Okay? So, consume less of non-essential items. Spend less on parties and festivals. Spend less. Uganda is a partying party. Funeral this and funeral that. We had uh, uh, one of our country directors who was a white. He was like, how do you people live? Every week somebody is dying and there is a funeral somewhere. <laughs> you are attending. Save enough money to buy necessities in large amounts at lower costs. I earn a salary. How can I be spending every day buying a good watch? Ten thousand. But I earn a salary. So when I earn my salary, why don't I have my list done and then I keep things? Buy less on credit as much as possible. Carry less money or save it in a safe place. Money is empty. When you have it at the pocket, spending it is easy. Even an ATM, you can go there at 3 a.m. and pick it. Engage discussing finances. And saving is very important. Proverbs 21, 20 says, There is treasure to be desired and oil in the bearing of the wise. But a foolish man spends it all. The Bible has found a definition for you if you are not saving money. It has called you a foolish man. That's not me. You are foolish. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man, in fact, another version says, devours it all. It uses the word devour. <laughs> devour means swankura. <laughs> when money comes, you are swankura. You are uneasy until it is done. <laughs> so, uh, when you are saving, let your money be saved in a safe space. All of us have lost money to con men and agencies. They are called pyramids. How many of you have heard about the networking pyramids? Those pyramids, they benefit people who start it. The majority of you at the bottom lose money. In fact, the formula is simple. If it is too easy to be true, don't go there. If you tell me your money will multiply twice in a month, I will run away. 
But some of you will run with your money. Save in safe spaces. Save in a church circle. We have a circle here, right? How many of you are members? By show of hands. You see, unless you are not aware, where else are you keeping your money? Safe, other than a church circle. A church circle is very important. Why? Because, one, it will put a saving culture in you. Two, it will give you a return on investment because you get a dividend. Three, it will borrow, lend you money at a very low cost. And very, very, very soon I will tell you the issue of debt management. So if you don't want issues with debts, come and borrow at a very low interest. And then two, you will get financial, free financial advice. If you join a circle, there are gurus, people who will train you on proper financial management. It is very critical that our children learn to save at an early age so that they are not like the other child who cannot differentiate between a 1,000 note and a 50,000 note and is going to senior one. How do you do it? Sit down, talk about money with children, let them save money. Mine, one of them is here. Very early, we developed the boxes, small boxes. They put money. Where do they get it? They do household chores and I pay them. Yes. If they wash my car and wash it ordinarily, I pay less. Yes. When they wash it extra clean, I pay more. Yes. Uh -huh. And I, and I know some people have a problem with it. Now you are making house chores look like a, a, a responsible baby. Who, who doesn't want paid money? Is there anyone? When these children go to school and I give them pocket money, they must save it. In fact, when you come back with the pocket money, the money you've saved, I multiply it by two. And none of them are starved. They don't look as bad, I can tell you. <laughs> so the money we give them, they can save that money. You are sowing a seed in them. Because the Bible says, train up the child. You can add on the rest. <laughs> but also the same Bible tells us we must work and work hard. Second Thessalonians 3.10 says, those unwilling to work should not also eat. So who are you pampering your children not to work? Eh? Because, you know, for us we suffered a lot now. <laughs> yeah, I don't want my children to What? Do you know what you are doing to your children? Do you know what will happen later when they are going to get married? A story is told one time, you know, in this traditional man like me, we eat my talk, peel. Uh, this bride didn't know how to peel. Eh? So, you see, then the, the man went complaining to the church elders. Now, oh, we eat only food from the supermarket. And when they asked the, the bride, so, do you know how to peel? Oh, no. Do you know how to cook rice? And he said, sort of. <laughs> sort of? Really? Is that how you want your child to be sort of? No, no, no. It doesn't matter whether it is a boy or a child. By age seven, I could peel. Oh, yeah. Right now at home, I compete with my wife in peeling. Oh, yeah. I can tell you, none of these children can peel faster than me. The other day I was at school there, they were peeling, uh, 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 they were peeling Irish. Those children could not believe how many eyes I can peel before they finish one. Because I like this thing. I have no issues. Even if you dump me where. I will peel my own food, I will prepare it. Now, let's not really pamper these children too much. Let them know that there is a no. Let them know that you don't have as plenty. A story is told of this child from one of the prominent schools who went to pick money. Um, uh, the parent was busy, he said, you pick your own pocket money. I think he went to a strong room and picked money. And then the teachers realized the school had been flooded with cash. They can't even, what? So they called the parent. They said, the, the parent came and they said, okay, so your child has stolen money. Of course, he said, Timothy said, said, yes, which, 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 which side did you pick the money? Which, which? <laughs> So I think he had sent him to pick on the bundles of 10 and 20. The child had picked from the bundles of, of 50,000. <laughs> so this was not an issue. The issue was which bar, where, where? Which side did you pick? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, where you are not, where you are not, those children will suffer. So this saving, 
Save as much as you can, as soon as you can. Pay yourself fast. Pay yourself fast is a very serious principle. You work hard, and then you are the last to be paid. Why? I am the one who earns the money. I must pay me that earns the money, right? But you first pay everybody, and you forget yourself. How do you pay yourself? One, develop the golden nest by putting some money for you and your spouse. Vacation, it's okay, these things you must partake. You go out and eat well. If you desire that nice shirt or dress, go and buy it, you earn it, you've earned it. Pay yourself fast. Hey. And then pay your tithes. Pay your what? Pay your tithes. Don't give excuse. They have told us to save. No, 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 no. Because gold and silver belong to God. Now you can adopt a 50, 30, 20 rule of saving. 50, 30, 20 percent rule. It says 50 percent of your money should go to needs, rent, food, and other things. If you are here and you are spending more than 50 percent of your salary on needs, you are already committing a financial sin. 20 per, 30 percent on your wants, uh, socializing with friends and other things. 20 percent for saving for a rainy day. So calculate how your money can grow. Uh, and this is the rule of the thumb. Two, try as much as possible to write a will. Write a what? A will. You don't want your money to go to someone you do not desire. Okay. I have ten, I attended those last funeral things. Hey, people are flexing. Because you did not. Who told you when you write a will you are going to die? <laughs> Zero. You are not going to die. A will is simply saying, this is how I want my things that I have sweated for managed when I am not here. It has nothing to do with death. Write it so that money goes to the people you desire to have. Let me talk about loan management and I will shut down. <laughs> Sorry. Loans, debts, ladies and gentlemen, are very good. They are also very bad. So I normally tell people, treat a loan as a loaded gun. Because it can save you or it can do what? You must handle with care. Proverbs 22, verse 7 says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. The day you borrow money, you become whose servant? But also, <coughs> on loans, Proverbs 27, 13, <laughs> cautions you to exercise maximum caution in becoming a guarantor, because you are a good Christian, you are a good person. You are signing a guarantor to everybody who wants to take money. You are going to lose property. You are going to lose property because you signed for people who cannot pay, whom you did not know. You don't know where they live. You don't know where they stay. Because you meet at church and say, praise God, you think that's a person you can guarantee. Zero. In fact, before you come to me, be careful. Just come knowing that this person doesn't sign anyhow. I am not saying don't become a guarantor. Only become a guarantor if you are ready to pay in full the money that the person has taken people's property and houses, including some of us here, have been attached because we guaranteed the wrong people. So, what are the simple rules of borrowing? One, don't borrow more than you can afford. Two, save money regularly for emergencies so you don't have to borrow. Avoid easy loans. Protect your financial image. Get all the information you need. Be honest to your lenders and borrow to invest. How do you take control of your debt if you're already indebted? One, make a list of loans, repayment amounts, and repayment debts. Pay the minimum amount due to each loan installment. Explore the possibility of consolidating all your loans into one. Use an extra cash to pay off the most expensive loan first. Cut down your lifestyle to clear, to clear debts. And finally, investment. Proverbs 14.23 and Proverbs 14, it says, He, he that tears his land shall have plenty of bread. He that tears the what? The land, you must work. But he that doesn't shall have poverty enough. So it's very important that in your adult age, invest. In your early age, learn to invest. Investment mix. We can talk about investment mix. If you have some time after this service, the Vajnastara will be in that hall. We can talk more. How you can invest and what you mean by investment mix. Now, retirement. 
Retirement. This is what you need to know. One, retirement can be voluntary or involuntary. It is very important that you prepare for it. How do you prepare for retirement? One, develop a long-term financial goal. Two, allocate hours for employment earning. Three, allocate hours for your own business. Three, four, invest in your own business and then invest early in education and financial literacy. Be mindful of your spouse, your banker, your lawyer, and your doctor. These are very, very important persons in your financial management. Be mindful of your health. We don't want successful failures. You worked very hard. You have accolades. Your health has failed because you did not take care of it. You don't have time to exercise. You are becoming uh, voluminous because you are working overtime to be, to be recognized. You need to live a balanced life. You become very busy. These clergy, you see, they work very hard, very hard. But some of them, their spouses, will tell you, not this one, you are here. This, this one is okay, the balance. But their spouses of clergy will tell you, we never see our husband, he was married to church. They have no time for their own family. You have no time for your own children. Then why are you working? Very, very important. Very important to develop a hobby, develop early enough a hobby where you will retire. Differentiate between a career and a vacation. Career is something you are paid for to do. A vacation is something you are called to do that you can do even without pay. You see me here? Even if you didn't pay me to do this, I can do it without getting tired. What is it that in your life you can do with a smile and it can serve as a hobby but also earn you money in your retirement? As I conclude, develop social networks. Have a belonging. How many clubs do you belong to? Are you a liar? Are you a Rotarian? Are you in Father's Union? Are you in Mother's Union? You don't belong anywhere. Where are you? At your workplace. Are you serious? Develop social networks so that you are able to get social capital as much as you can. So, concluding on this, planning for retirement is a choice. You must decide what is best for you and then determine how to make it possible. Your goals for later in life are as important as your short-term goals. While many older adults enjoy working to stay active and involved, it's, must, it's much different to work because you want. You don't want, I, have, I told the earlier service, if you're a young man, if you're a young lady, you must target to marry your spouse early. Yes. <laughs> you will finish school, you will finish school. What are you waiting for? A bigger salary? I want to first build the house. Uh, but who told you? In fact, you are better off when you start off with your spouse and work together and build big things. Okay? But now imagine at 45, and, uh, and, 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 and the Vic explained it earlier better. Your, your children are in primary after retirement in nursery. You are dropping children in nursery school, having retired. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, retirement planning for old age um, is important. It cannot be avoided. It can be planned for, and you can enjoy it. And I will end with the African reality. The African reality is that in Africa, every morning, a gazelle wakes up. It knows that it must run faster than the fastest lion, or it will die. It will be eaten. But at the same time in Africa, ladies and gentlemen, every morning a lion wakes up. It knows that it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. There are fellow Christians. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you are a gazelle or you are a lion. When the sun comes up, you'd better be running. May God bless you.